I was in uh, Mexico City not too long ago. There were some reporters there, and they, one of them stood up and kind of challenged me and asked me this question, who do you think you are coming down into our culture talking about sexual purity? We are hot-blooded, we are sensual. That's just the way Latinos are, okay? Now let me ask you a pair of questions in light of that question. If your culture has always been a certain way sexually, does that mean that you have no further responsibility for your sexual actions and that you can ignore scripture? Or is it this way? If your culture has been sensual for years, okay, are you responsible to separate that culture from your own life and from your own mind and live a different way from those around you? That's an important question, you see, because your cultural beliefs are man's way of thinking. And man's way of thinking will abort the purification process in your life every time because it just leads to mixture. Okay. In this reporter's case, for instance, he had the mixture of the Latino mind and the Christian mind. In my case, I once had the mixture of the American mind with the Christian mind. But the truth is, if I desire the mind of Christ, I have to get the American mind out of my head completely, or I'm never going to align with Christ. Let me give you an example why. What is the American mind? Well, this is what American men say. Hey, looking and lusting is just guys being guys. There's no problem with that. God wouldn't have made women this beautiful if he didn't want us to look at them. I mean, looking at women and kind of lusting, that's no different than being in a museum and appreciating fine art. Okay. How about this one? Why worry about what I look at? The blood covers it all anyway. I'm fine. I'm going to heaven. How about this one? Porn is just pictures on paper. What are you talking about? Nothing I do in the privacy of my home hurts anyone. What I'm saying is we need to be very careful how much of our culture is in our thinking when it comes to our sexuality. Let me give you a few more examples. Um, at that same event, I was talking to a reporter from Colombia, and uh, she had some very interesting things to say about her culture. She says it's common for parents to take their sons to prostitutes at age 14 to teach them about sex, to teach them about love. Also, it's expected of married men to have mistresses. If you have three or four maids to take care of your home, it is literally expected that you will be regularly having sex with them, all of them. When Christian men in Colombia are challenged regarding their purity, they have one of two responses, she told me. Hey, I'm a man, I'm built this way, there's not a thing I can do about it. Number two, I'm mature, I can watch R-rated movies, it doesn't hurt me at all. Let me give you another example. When I was in Costa Rica recently, I just happened to be there at the time when Focus on the Family released survey results uh, on married evangelical men. They had surveyed 300 evangelical Christian men and they had asked this question, have you ever had an affair, a physical affair, outside your marriage? 299 out of 300 Christian men said, yes, I've had an affair outside of marriage. And I was told by some of my friends there that that's just part of the culture. What is expected of us as Christian men when we're raised in cultures like Mexico, like Costa Rica, like Colombia, like America, okay? Are we responsible for our sexual purity if we're raised there? Okay, what about you as men? Are you responsible for your sexual purity or can you simply say, I'm a man, I'm built this way, and besides my culture's this way, this is the way we are? When it comes to sensuality and sexuality, what is normal for a Christian man? What's a Christian man supposed to look like? What's the normal look? Okay, who defines normal? That's the other question. Most of us are defining normal based upon our cultures. Now, we in America, we even in this room, Okay. The same thing is true. Most of the people in this room regularly peek into other people's bedrooms to watch other couples having sex. Regularly. Now, we call that going to the movies. Now, that's what we call normal. That's what we call common. Everyone thinks this way. It's okay. To not do that would be considered completely strange. So I would ask you this as men. How are you defining normal? What is what is it 
that you call normal? Is it the things that are common in the world? You see, God doesn't measure normal by what's common in the world. He doesn't measure normal in relation to the world at all. He measures normal in comparison to the Word. Not the world, the Word. Okay, and he uses words like sin, which means missing the mark.